The federal budget came out a few days ago and there is a whole lot to talk about. Now in this video, we're just gonna discuss the real estate aspects of the federal budget because that's all I actually feel like I'm qualified to actually talk about. But we're gonna break down everything that the government is going to be implementing and how it's actually going to affect you as a buyer or seller. What's actually kind of encouraging to me is that a lot of the things that we saw in this budget on the real estate side of things were the liberal government actually making good on their election promises. Whether or not you agree with what they do is a whole nother conversation, but it is encouraging to me that what they said they were going to do, they are actually trying to do. Now, just before we jump into all the changes that are coming to the Canadian real estate market and how it could affect you, uh, I want to welcome you back to the channel. My name is Tom Story. I do run a real estate team here in the city of Toronto. And on this video, we're going to talk about the entire country, how these changes are going to affect Canada. If you like this type of content, if you like this video, that would be awesome. Also, we are so, so close to 5,000 subscribers and we're going to do a huge giveaway. So if you haven't already subscribed, please click that button. That would be great. And finally, I know a lot of people have questions when things change. Um, and we're doing calls with clients and viewers of this channel. So if you want to go into the first link in the description, you can book a buyer consultation with me, a seller consultation, or just a call to chat about the market to see how these changes may affect you. Okay, so we're going to start this off with a ban on forum buyers. Um, so we're going to show here on the screen is a, is a full breakdown of everything that happened from stories.com. So shout out to them for putting this together so nicely. Uh, and the first thing is that ban on foreign buyers. So there's going to be a two year ban on residential purchases made by foreign nationals. Now, this will not extend to those who are purchasing a primary residence in Canada, permanent residents, foreign workers or students, refugees and others coming to Canada under emergency travel measures will also be exempt. OK, so banning foreign buyers. Great, right? It's like we want to keep real estate to people that are actually residents of this country. I totally understand that. This was actually one of the only policies that both the liberals and conservatives both agreed on going into the election. Now, I think the real question is, is the banning of foreign buyers actually going to make a difference to the market? I have talked to so many people at different levels of real estate all across the board. And I asked them like, OK, well, what is the real percentage of foreign buyers who are buying properties in Canada? Because in certain parts of Canada, there was already a tax implemented 15 to 20 percent in Ontario and parts of B.C. where they were already being taxed for buying in our country. But now there is just a flat out two year ban. I think the question is, is banning foreign buyers going to make homes more affordable? And I don't know the answer. That's the truth. But I think we're going to find out sooner or later. And we're going to see now moving forward, although there are many exceptions to this rule, how this is going to affect the real estate market. Because I've heard stats that say foreign buyers are about 5% of purchasers across Canada. If you take out 5% of the demand, is that actually going to curb prices? That we'll have to wait and see. Final thought on this, because it's easy to ban people that can't vote, right? I mean, it makes sense. And I think everyone that lives here understands that, yeah, this could be a helpful thing. It's a blanket ban, okay? So when we think about foreign buyers, we think about all over the world, but it's also your friends and cousins in other countries that are right on our border. It's Americans as well. We've now banned them from buying real estate in Canada for the next two years. And if Biden and the administration in the United States right now want to do something back to us and they ban Canadians from buying homes in Florida's, there's going to be a whole bunch of snowbirds absolutely freaking out. So that's another thing I'm going to keep a close eye on. We put a blanket ban on everybody from buying in Canada for two years. Let's see if anybody does it back to us. OK, back to the article now. Now, the next change other than the foreign buyer ban was the Home Buyers Bill of Rights. So the Liberals have officially kicked off the process to establish a Home Buyer Bill of Rights. That will include a much debated ban on blind bidding, uh, along with a buyer's right to a home inspection, transparency on past sold data, title searches, and publicly accessible uh, beneficial ownership registry. Now, this home buyer bill of rights is realistically a long way away because the federal government cannot come into provinces and territories and tell them how to run things. Um, they have to come in and slowly make these changes over time. So it's going to be up to each province and territory in Canada how open they are to allowing this federal bill of rights to come into place. And I think the biggest talking point on this federal bill of rights uh, is the ban of blind bidding. Now, I've really changed my tune on this. Uh, I think transparency is a good thing for the real estate market, but I do not think making bidding going from blind bidding to open bidding solves the problem here. Um, if it makes people feel better about the process, yeah, sure, I'm all for that. It's not going to make homes 
less expensive or that the demand's gonna absolutely just change overnight. Um, I've actually heard so many times buyers that we work with say, well, if I knew it was gonna sell for that, I would have paid more than that. So I actually wonder with all the information being out there, uh, if people are gonna actually spend more, it's gonna get more emotional than it was previously. We've already seen this play out in markets like Australia where it's gone to the open bidding uh, format has certainly not helped home prices. Now, next up on the list here, as we move down, a crackdown on money laundering. Now, I have heard a lot of talk about this uh, in the Twitter space. Uh, a lot of people talking about in the mortgage industry how money laundering is becoming a big issue. I can't really comment on it because I don't see that side of the business. I'm just working with buyers and sellers. I don't really see the financial side. Um, but if they're cracking down on money laundering and you can get it out of Canadian real estate, obviously I am absolutely all for that. Now here's the next big one that's gonna make the news. Non-flipping and speculation taxes, okay? So basically what they're saying here for people that are buying properties and flipping it before 12 months of ownership is they're going to be taxed on that as business income. Now, there's a few ways that we can look at this, right? Okay, so first of all, you're taking the investor that's going to flip it out and you're letting the, the actual buyer that's going to live there have the opportunity. So there's less competition on the homes at the beginning. That I agree with. Now, the second thing we have to think of is the actual amount of inventory that comes to the market. So if they can buy a house, they can renovate it, bring it up to the level that the street expects and make it look really nice. And someone is willing to buy it and they can do that in an eight month period. That's actually bringing more inventory back to the market. Now what you're basically telling uh, renovators, because not everyone's a speculator, right? They're, some are just renovators, is that they got to wait a year. So it's just going to hold more inventory uh, from the market. So maybe less projects are going to go on. It's going to take neighborhoods a little bit more time to gentrify in different areas. And again, depending on what side of the argument you're on, you could be for that or against that. Um, another thing here that, they, that they're going to put into place is on assignment sales. Okay, so the government will also start taxing assignment sales, the trading of real estate that has not yet been occupied. Uh, it happens very frequently in the pre-construction side of things uh, in our Ontario market by making it subject to GSC or HSC as of May 7th, 2022. Um, you yeah, know, this is interesting actually to me because so many people think they can just buy pre-construction properties and assign them and make a quick buck. And frankly, I think those days are long over. And you add this to the equation, I don't know, the people that paid fifteen to $2,000 a square foot for pre-construction, just based on the thought of trying to assign it before closing, um, they're going to be in the negatives. If we keep going down here, a boost for new supply, so the Housing Acceleration Fund, um, I'm not going to really get into this because these are all things that like we haven't actually seen play out. Because everything so far has been bans or taxes. Now, this is the one fund that they're actually bringing money to the market in terms of building more supply because i think frankly that is what we need but i don't want to comment too much on this yet because i gotta see if they actually do it as we keep going down here this is the one i really like uh this is really positive so support for first-time home buyers um, there's a few measures announced for first-time home buyers such as the introduction of a tax-free first-time home buyers savings account which will combine the tax sheltering benefits of an rsp and tfsa and savers under the age of 40, okay, so you have to be under 40, are able to stash up to $40,000 tax-free within this account. This I like, I think this is great. Now, even though in bigger expensive markets like Toronto, Vancouver, and other areas across Canada, $40,000 is like not even a deposit check these days. In other markets in Canada, and realistically, even the big markets in some circumstances, this is great. It's better to have this than to not have this. This is actually the one part for first time home buyers um, in the budget that I am thrilled about. I think it is awesome and I think it's a good thing. And I hope that it makes a difference because the first time home buyers always have the hardest time. When we look at real estate prices in terms of Canada, it's not just income, it's not tied to income, it's equity redistribution, it's family money, it's trading up from what you already bought. But the people sitting on the sidelines without the equity, if they can take advantage of this tax-free savings account, uh, if they're under 40, up to $40,000, that is a very, very positive thing. Now, that's all the main changes in terms of the budget. I wanna ask you what you think. Do you think any of this is actually gonna make a difference? Because I think the ban on foreign buyers is the big one. 
The tax-free savings account for first-time home buyers is encouraging. Um, taxing assignment sales with HST or GST, I think it's gonna really change and shake up the pre-construction space. And the, the tax on potential flippers or speculators that are selling properties uh, in that 12 month period. Now there are exemptions to many of these new rules, but yeah, this is gonna change the Canadian real estate market as we know it. And I wanna know what you think. Is this a good thing or is this a bad thing? Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, as always, my name is Tom Story and remember, home is where your story begins.